Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled today to be joined by today's guest, Josea Chanchez, to talk all about his latest series on Paramount Plus, The Game. And I wanted to start by talking about the really unique experience of revisiting a character in this way a few years after you left off playing him, and also because so much so much has changed within athleticism and the sports world and the way that we view athletes, the way that they utilize their platforms and voices. Um, and so I was really interested in that journey of not necessarily learning how to play a character for the first time but what that looked like in really looking at the space and time in between and figuring out where he would be at this point in his life you know even going beyond the details that the scripts were giving you to really figure mm -hmm. out his backstory from the last few years mm -hmm. you know what that was the most exciting part about playing him again honestly and truthfully is to get to dig into something um, a lot deeper than I got the opportunity to before in both inclinations of the show on the CW and on BET, um, I was really fascinated to know more. I'd always felt that Malik didn't really have uh, the full journey, the full arc of a journey of a man that I, uh, as, a, as an artist and as a human, wanted for him. I, I wanted his story to be more well-rounded and to tell more of his story. But however, as you know, as people know who've seen the show, our cast was really big and it was really difficult to, you know, really tell those stories. At one point in time, we had, I think, about eight main cast members. So on this inclination of the series, as we dug in, um, I got to speak to our writer, creator, uh, Mara, and to Devon, our uh, new showrunner and executive producer. Got to speak to them about the, the character and the nuances of the character and the things in some ways that we missed, um, that I missed. And, and that the audience didn't get an opportunity to, to uh, discover about the character, to uncover about the character. And so uh, Devon and I had had a, a really detailed conversation about his journey. And in that journey, we knew that we would go back in time and deliver some things about Malik that uh, the audience had not known. And even things about Malik that Hosea had not known playing him um, for well over a decade at that point in time. And so going back in his life uh, is actually a big piece of where we start. It's a big piece of his art to go back to who Malik was before we even met him, before anybody knew uh, who Malik Eldebarge Wright was. So we're going back in time to tell a lot of his core, a lot of his story um, of who he is and how he got to when we first met him and to now what that childhood uh, joys and traumas have created in his life that he's having to deal with in the new inclination of the series. So it's really exciting to go back and discover something about a character that you never even considered or never even had an inkling of. And so that's where I am right now. I'm in the discovery phase as an actor, which is such a huge blessing because we never get the opportunity to play a character in different decades of his life. I started with this guy at 25, I was 25. And now at 40, um, how often as an actor do you get the opportunity to play a character in his 20s, in his 30s, and now at 40 um, for him and for me? <laughs> so yeah, it's a, it's a phase of discovery. It's a time of uh, just joy for me as an artist because it's something that we never really get the opportunity to do, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that you were bringing up conversations that you were having with Mara and Devon there because you're not only coming back on board as an actor, but also as a producer and you're also mm -hmm. directing on the show as well now. But particularly as a producer, did that really shift and evolve the autonomy that you felt like you had over Malik as a character and the types of conversations that you were having with the two of them and the rest of the team, not just about your character, but the show overall? And how has that really changed your approach and your work as an actor on the series as well? You know, being a producer and in the time that I was on the series before um, into now, I've done every single episode of the show. And it's not a, a uh, it's, it, it's just a matter of fact that I know more about this world than most people. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not, it's not a brag, but it is just literally uh, Wendy and I are the only two people that have done every single episode of the series. So I'm very familiar with this world, the ins and outs of this world. And it's interesting because I've always been the guy on the show. I, I was the new cat uh, when we first got these jobs. And <laughs> I 
I dived into this world as an artist. I loved being an actor and an artist in this way and learning different things. Um, and so I've always been enamored with this world. I've been a fan of the series uh, since I've been on it, even before I was really on it, uh, a fan of the show before, Girlfriends, which was um, our, we were a spinoff, so to speak, of Girlfriends, which was just a backdoor pilot to get uh, Mara's vision on screen. And so I've been in the trenches with this series and I know these characters and I know this world outside of just me being an actor. Cause see, I think there's a, uh, there's a real shift. Cause as an actor, I think a lot of times we're concerned with our character and what we contribute to that world that our character lives in. And that had been a lot of my journey, but for the most part, it always been grounded in the complete story of what the game is. So for me, um, coming back into it this time, the only way for me to do it really and truthfully would be to be a producer on the series. Um, we have a lot of new eyes, we got a lot, a lot of new faces, not only in front of the camera, but also behind the camera. So I, uh, <laughs> I, I trust me, you know, in, in so many ways. So it wasn't necessarily about uh, just a vanity of a credit or something of that sort, but it was really me trusting myself to know I know the world and I can um, contribute something to this world outside of just my character as often actors do, but the entire world that um, that we're creating. And that's what excites me the most about the show is the producing part and the directing. After we did the series uh, on BET, I actually went back to school. I went, uh, went to, yeah, went to, <laughs> went back to school, my old ass. <laughs> to learn the structure and, and the embodiment of what filmmaking and television making was. So coming into this, I knew for a fact that it just needed to be, I had to have more, um, more weight, more, more, more space and room that I've taken up in the series. And luckily everybody on board from the network to my executive producer, Devon, everybody else, they agreed. So I'm a producer. <laughs> It's amazing. And in directing the show, especially because you do know it more than, you know, almost anybody else, like you said, and that is just a fact at the end of the day, did you find that you were stepping back and looking at previous episodes to really navigate the visual language or was the specificity of finding the visual language of the show as a director, something that came very naturally from being in front of the camera and seeing all the setups that they're doing and how they're using different shot choices to, to create that visual language of the series? Mm -hmm. Well, luckily right now I'm in the mix of, I'm, I'm shadowing some really brilliant directors on the series. Um, <laughs> and I'm so, 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 so fortunate that this world that we're in now, um, it is a completely different world. I mean, it's not completely different. It's the same, um, it's the same familiarity that you get from the series um, in the world, but the circumstances are different as uh, everyone knows now. But and the tone and the texture of the show is completely different than anything it's ever been. And that really excited me even more uh, because it's darker, it's grittier, it's, re it's, it's more, uh, I can't say more real. Eh. I guess I can't say more real. It feels more real and it feels more real because of the time that we're living in. Um, for us as artists, for you, for you know, us actors and everybody else, it's, we're in you know, these COVID times. So everything now, feels a lot more grounded and a lot more real for all of us. So that's showing up on screen and that's showing up in this world that we're created, um, that we're creating. So for me, uh, going to film school, learning the fundamentals of film and television and appreciating every single aspect of the building blocks in this community that I live in, um, I'm more than excited to be an architect in the story structure, which directors are. Um, but it's exciting because I have to learn everything just like everybody else, because it's a brand new inclination of the show. Um, we have familiar characters, like I said, as we know, but, you know, discovering this world as a director and shadowing Peter and Ali and like all these brilliant people. Um, it's really teaching me a lot about uh, the fundamental building blocks of film and television. So, yeah, I'm excited to direct my episode, which should be coming up. Hopefully soon. <laughs> 
Amazing. Can't wait to watch that one. And in terms of the show being more grounded and, and having a different tonality, when you look at the first ever episode of the original iteration to what the show is now, they're so, mm -hmm. you know, connected and linear, but very different tonally. Um, and obviously one of the aspects for you is your performance and getting to explore Malik's relationship with mental health, which is something that is more of a dialogue and more of a presence, but has always been present within athleticism. We just haven't been having these conversations. And from a performance standpoint, I was really interested in how you wanted to approach that, particularly when it comes to the conversations that Malik is having with Caleb, which are all in his mind because you have to approach those scenes so delicately. And you also really have to carry the audience on that journey because if they don't, believe it and they don't step into that slightly different scenario with him then those scenes don't work but they work really mm -hmm. brilliantly because of how you've managed to approach them from your performance thank you thank you for saying that and you know that hasn't been something that's easy and that's also a shout out to the actor cecil who plays uh caleb he is uh, a really 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 good actor he's great to play off of but that's one of the things that 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 um character and the nuances of that character were my biggest concerns. They were my biggest concerns from the very beginning is making sure that we get this right and making sure that this is played um, earnestly, lovingly, informatively, and open and not judgmental or not pushing past it or not, um, not just learning the material, but that, that type of uh, character issue requires a lot of work and a lot of research and um even fighting against things and scenes that are funny um just to make sure the work is really grounded those are the the way i approached the scene and the work because i needed to do it with kid gloves i needed to do it um and be fully aware of the world that I'm portraying on screen, because this is something that's not only is not not only is this something that we need to discuss, but it's something that these guys are dealing with and everybody is dealing with. That's the thing that I've learned about mental illness. I was not aware that most athletes, if not all athletes, are dealing with um, this type of trauma. But every single human being on this planet right now is dealing with this type of trauma, mental illness of some sorts. Um, and for me, I had to dive into myself and uncover a lot about who Hosea is and what Hosea has been through in order to play it honestly. And I've learned through playing Malik and, and in this time where he's dealing with, uh, I hate to say mental illness, but mental illness, um, I've learned the synergy between him and myself too, in that way. Um, I too, much like most people, as, we, as I've said, have suffered you know, from mental illness in some way, form or fashion, still am um, through the traumas of COVID and everything that we're experiencing and death and this and the other. So I had to start with a real place of honesty within Hosea to understand what he was going through. And then after I uncovered uh, the traumas and, and the mental, uh, mental blockages and things that have hurt me in, in, in my journey, um, then I was able to play it more honestly because it really is, uh, like I said, something that is important for me to tell and to do it the right way um, for everybody else that might be watching and dealing with the same things. Yeah, so, you yeah it was a go ahead. I'm sorry. No, sorry. No, I was just saying it was really it's a really uh, specific and poignant and important thing for me to try to do it the best that I could um, as an actor. So you were mentioning there some of the research that you did as well, um, specific to athleticism. And obviously it's not mm -hmm. just about the fact that Malik is dealing with mental health. There's the physical toll that his body has taken over the years. There's concussions, there's injuries that he's faced mm -hmm. and just everything that it requires from you to be an athlete as well that affects you psychologically. And so from the research that you were doing, were there specificities that you found within the athletic world that you really felt were important to carry over into your performance and how you approach these stories? storylines absolutely the physicality of and, and <laughs> it's yet another synergy between Malik and myself it, being a 40 year old man um, there are a lot of things that I didn't really understand about becoming a man as a young man and, and this is a synergy with a lot of athletes too is that we don't really have a place and an outlet to discuss what men encounter how our bodies break down how our minds break down 
how the physicalities of this job that these guys are doing, and hell, really a lot of us are doing, how it takes its toll on your body. And particularly with men of color, with black men, um, we don't have these around the table conversations like some of my other peer groups do and my other friends do. We don't have a dialogue about um, the ever-changing and aging body. Um, and that was something that was a self-discovery for Hosea that was a synergy between the character is because I, you know, I get out of bed now and <laughs> I got to put my feet down and I'm not acting like I'm 60, 70 years old by any stretch of the imagination, but on my journey, um, I have noticed that little tweaks and stuff in your body, you know, in your joints and things. And speaking to some of my athlete friends, um, that's one of the things that they have to reconcile with is the deterioration of us not being able to do the things that we used to do. And even having to contend with, you know, younger players who are faster, who are better, um, which is something that Jose has had to contend with on the show. It's having newer, younger actors on a series that I've, I've birthed um, and seeing how they come into this world with such a, uh, an energy. There, there's a, 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 a vibration to youthfulness, as we now know, and having to contend with your own uh, <laughs> vibration, you know, having to work harder. I used to be able to get in shape three weeks before I went to this job. And now it takes me a couple of months to get in shape. However, I am in the best shape of my life because I started three months before this time. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, you know, the physicalities of life, I'll jump back into uh, answering the, the direct question, but the physicalities of life as Hosea and as Malik, um, thankfully have lended themselves to have a synergy that I can do the, the homework and the life work to understand this man um, in a far better capacity than I've ever been able to really understand him. So yeah, it's a, it's a really, it plays a really important part in the work that we do is diving into the physicalities of him. And you'll see some of the physicalities that Malik has encountered. Like when you see him on the field, the truth is he's tired. And some, sometimes, you know what I mean? So these are things that I have to, uh, bring to screen and bring to life and portray in the most authentic manner that I can. And luckily, because I'm a producer on the show, I've been working like 18 to 20 hours every single day that we're at work. <laughs> so the physical wear down is something that I wear honestly on the show. <laughs> a little bit of method acting for the exhaustion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> it's also really interesting getting to look at and explore a character who's at a point where he has so much certainty about who he is, his inner mm -hmm. self, and what he mm -hmm. wants. And yet that brings a whole new slew of uncertainties with it of how do I navigate this? How do I reach the end goal? You know, right at the beginning of the first episode, he thought that he had everything he wanted mm -hmm. immediately. And then it all crumbled as quickly as it was coming together. And so now we're mm -hmm. getting to see <laughs> how he tries to figure out, you know, I'm having conversations, I'm having different types of conversations with people. I've got to show up on the golf course. What does that mean? Right. And the whole political right. game on a different side. But we also get to see really beautiful moments about the way that he's so supportive with Jameson and his relationship with other players really representing who he would be as an owner as well of a team. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. so what what approach did you want to have with that dichotomy of real confidence and real certainty, but also a lot of the uncertainty and the journey to get there for him? Well, <laughs> yet again, it's another synergy, um, which is also why uh, I knew that this was something that I needed to do and that I had to do. Um, it was almost like the, the, the Red Sea had parted and God was like, okay, I'm gonna give you exactly what you wanted in closure and in story here. Um, but the way I prepared for that journey with him was actually my own journey as a producer and director of the series. And knowing that in this inclination of the show, I would have to take up more ownership because that requires ownership. And that's something that I that I I'd, uh, I'd fought really hard for, although the network didn't make me fight too hard because they saw the value in it, too. Um, but that was something that I fought really hard for. So I knew coming into this that I would have to be 100 percent present. And there are no excuses, even though you're tired as an actor, you still have a job to do as a producer and as a director. And if, even though you're tired in those areas, you still have a job to do as an actor. And there is no complaining, <laughs> fortunately or unfortunately. So you just roll your sleeves up and get it done. So coming into this, I knew 
that I had a lot, I had a lot to prove um, being a producer of the series. And again, you know, the fans and people who have seen the show over the years and every single inclination of the series, um, Wendy and I are the people that are familiar with the show. We're the eyes and ears that people have grown to know and to trust on this journey. So I knew that ownership for Malik on the series was very similar to ownership for Hosea. Um, and again, th we're in a world now where everybody is really new. Uh, we, you know, new writers, new producers, new every everything in this world is new. So I knew that there would be, again, an ownership, much like Malik, who's fighting for ownership um, on the show. Hosea, too, is not fighting for ownership, but proving to uh, to my bosses, uh, the network and, and Devon and everybody around that I have what it takes to do this job and to do this job well. Starting out, honestly, I had uh, I'd put acting on the back burner for a while and had just completely focused on directing and writing uh, my feature feature that I'm going to direct my feature film and um, just diving into the world of producing things and being behind the camera. I didn't really know if or when exactly I'd be an actor again and not necessarily wanting to do that type of on-camera work at that particular time. So I knew if I went back to the game, I'd be an actor. And if I was being an actor, then I'd need to have something that actually fed my soul and my spirit for where I am today, not versus when I got the job. And so for me, that was, again, ownership, similar to what Malik is facing and what he's going through and what he desires. Um, eventually, I'll have my own series and probably show run and executive produce uh, my own show. And this is a, a, a building block to helping me acquire the things that I need in my life to continue on my journey as Hosea, much like Malik continuing on his journey um, to ownership or wherever that leads him. So it was, a, it was a real synergy there that I could pull from my own experience, my own doubts about going back into this world, because I've done this for a long time. You know what I mean? 15 years of my life. And by the time I'm done with it this time, I will have played the same character for almost 20 years of my life. Now, on the outside of that, it was a little bit intimidating, to be honest with you, because I didn't know. Um, you know, I was like, oh, God, am I really going to spend my whole life playing the same guy? But then it quickly changed for me after prayer and meditation about the show. And God literally told me how much of a blessing this was because actors don't get the opportunity to journey through one character's life for different decades of their life. We can do it in film. We collapse time to experience what those characters are like in an hour and 45 minutes as they age. But to truly sit in a character for different decades of his life is just mind blowing. So my perspective shifted and I realized that I'm actually probably one of the most lucky actors that I know because I get to do this um, and I get to grow and change as the character grows and change changes in real life. So, yeah, I'm a fortunate guy. <laughs> It's it's really remarkable experience to have, like you said, and and I also imagine that there must have been such a journey when you look back to when you first came on set for the first few episodes, the way that you would work on scenes, the way that the cast were kind of getting to know each other, and now you're mm -hmm. in this really unique space, like you said, where you and Wendy have done every single episode, you know this character like the back of your hand, and so there's a different kind of intrinsic nature in stepping back into a character in this way. And yet at the same mm -hmm. time, there are still new cast members and new crew members as well as returning. So it's it's taking the old and also figuring out what are the new elements of how we work on scenes. So what has that evolution and arc been when you come onto set now and you work on an episode and the way that everybody comes together and really figures out the beats and the moments of a scene? You know what, it's actually, um familiar and, and, and excitingly familiar for me because it's similar to the way we started. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's very similar to the way we started with, um, we're, we're a family as much as you can, you know, call your work family a family. Um, I don't like to throw the word family around uh, lo loosely by any stretch of the imagination, but we are uh, as close as work people can get. It's always been the little engine that could for us. Uh, we've always come in at some form of a curveball. Like we've, we've always come in behind a curve or um, having to beat something or someone or not getting this or not. And 
for the younger actors who are coming into this, and I don't say young, meaning they're young in age, but younger in this world, um, for them to come in and to, to be in this place of self-discovery, you know, and, and figuring out all the, the bells and whistles for their characters in the world and all these things. These are the things that really excite me every day is because it reminds me so much of when we were building the show and trying to figure out our characters um, from the very first pilot, from the pilot episode. And I, I, I honestly have to say that fortunately, we've hired really good actors that have come in and that have taken ownership in this place. Cause I tell the actors all the time, I'm like, yeah, Wendy and I have been here, but you have to come in here. You have to take up ownership because this is your show too. And so them coming in with that type of uh, validation from Wendy and myself um, gave them the freedom and the opportunity to come in and take up space and learn more about the characters and grow in so many areas. And what that's done for me, it's allowed me to grow too. It's given me um, this excitement to see this world new through their eyes in the world that I've been in so long, you know what I mean? So it's really been uh, reminiscent of when we first started out on the CW as the little engine that could, trying to prove that not only are we great, um, but if you make it, the audience will show up and they will come in and they'll watch us. Yeah. Well, I, I think yeah. every iteration of the show, you've absolutely proved that. And I love that sentiment that you welcome new people into the series with. It's really wonderful to hear all of this about the show. Thank you so much for sharing all of this, Hosea. Thank you.